Okay. So I'm Hannah Wheeler. I'm the co-founder of Zap Creative. Um, I'm a brand designer and creative director of the agency. Um, I'm very passionate working with companies of all sizes to create a strong brand that attracts lifelong customers. Um, so basically living the life that you desire while serving people to your fullest is one of our philosophies. And we want to do that by helping you in every aspect. So one thing that uh, makes life so much easier um, is is Canva. And we, we use the Adobe Creative Suite for our clients, but we do almost all of our presentations, social, um, so many things in Canva. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty powerful um, program. Okay, so we're talking Canva for social media, business cards, um, presentations, sales sheets, media kits. So a lot of times um, your, your campaign is defined by the product or service that you're promoting and you want to create this like look and feel that's also on brand so we we talk about on branded um, social posts and so um, great ways to use camera are the templates that are there but we'd like to kind of explore more about your brand kit so i'm just going to open up here into the basics has everybody heard of the the brand kit inside of canva pro so inside of there, there's a brand kit portion and you can actually add your logo, you can add your color palette, you can add all of your fonts here on this side. And this way it keeps everything on brand. So all you do, um, you do have to have the, the pro version and I believe it's about $17 a month for pro and uh, yearly I think it's $13 a month is what it works out to be. So this, um, it has a lot more capabilities by going with that version. So um, but, when you but add, there is, just sorry to interrupt, but there is a free version, but it just doesn't allow this part of it, right? Correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. So you can use the free, um, but there's just different capabilities. So I'm using the pro right now. So I'll be showing how to use um, more robust, I guess, pieces on this pro uh, camera for pro. So then you can also create your, your folders. So for me, I've created a bunch of these folders. Um, inside of here um, and we can kind of get into do you guys want to learn social media first maybe the social templates how far do you guys know in terms of the templates to use inside of here have you guys experimented with any of these these templates before not really. no I, not really I, I, I know I've used the only one I've used is the Facebook one which I think okay. is maybe a good one to show that's a good place to start maybe Sounds good. Okay, so I'll pull up this Facebook post. Um, a lot of times you can kind of use a framework um, inside of these templates. So for example, if you're looking for your overall brand, say has an aesthetic of, you know, something that's a bit more clean. Um, you can use something that relates to your brand, but always keep in mind, you know, what are those key features of your brand? Do you use clean lines? Do you use um, texture, you know, what types of pieces do you, do you work inside of your brand? So if you always use things, everything on an angle, use pieces that are, you know, angular, um, that overall works with your brand. I'm just going to grab a photo in here. So you can actually upload your images inside of here. So I just drag and drop, which is kind of awesome. So I pull an image, I drag and drop it, and it'll upload into my uploads. It just likes to think. So once it's uploaded inside of here, then you can pull it right in. So we can just use this one. And then it's nice to get with the scaling, you don't have to hold anything. You can just scale. There's the position side. So you can send it to the back if you'd like up here. So you can move things around. You can kind of bring things over here. I like to, uh, a lot of times when they're in the, in the template, inside of here, you, you need to un ungroup the pieces. So up the top here, you can ungroup. So then everything is isolated by itself. Um, so you can change um, the color palette here. Inside of here, I have my brand colors that I typically use, but you can, um, you can change it according to which colors you'd like for your brand piece. When we're doing something that has, for example, um, more of a sales component. So if you're, if you're doing your social posts that you're, you know, you're promoting a, a product or service, you can have your, like your, at your sales in there. But if you're designing something that is more from your brand perspective and you want to share like a tip 
for Tips Tuesday. Um, that's something you can post on your grid on Instagram, um, but you don't want to you don't want to do that for uh, putting like your your posts that are too salesy within your grid. So just uh, just to keep in mind. Um, I don't know how far you guys have used the Canva with like highlighting the text. You can change the color as well inside of here. So it's, it's kind of um, nice how there's so many different um, options that they have. So have you, uh, there's lots of, well, one second here. we can go to adjust and you can adjust the, the brightness and contrast in these images. So if you really want it to be lighter or more saturated, you can, you can really play with this, with this side of it. Normally I would use um, like Photoshop or, or Lightroom, but now they have the basic, the basic components that you can actually update inside of here, which is awesome. Have you guys all, have you seen this piece before with your photos? Okay, I think you can pretty much assume we haven't. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just making no. sure. Um, great. No, that's, that's good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to teach you guys as many things as I, as I can. <laughs> okay. So then inside of here as well with boxes, you can also click this button on the right. It's the transparency button. So you can actually create more transparency, you know, to see, see through your tech, see through your boxes um, as well. Um, there's some fun features now at the top. There's these little animation pieces. So you can click those and we can see different ways that we can animate our text. So it's, um, it's kind of fun playing with your brand personality. So it depends on your personality as well as um, you know, the ad behind what you're, you're, you're wanting to promote is how the personality will come in. So for, for us being Zap Creative, we pretty, pretty much just use the pan option um, to show the more sophisticated side, the professional side. Um, but if we had a campaign that was more fun, then we'd use something a bit more um, with personality. So then Hannah, those will be animated on Facebook? Yeah, so you can export them. Um, you can do, there's a GIF option. Um, there's a few other options too that you can, you can export and, and upload. Oh, that's great. Yeah, another really great one is on your cover photo of your Facebook um, page, you can actually uh, export this video and then you can have a video playing behind and have oh. your image on top. Oh. So okay. it's kind of a really great, you can also choose say something like this, let's just say. So my color palette for Zap has teal in, in it. And so say I wanted to integrate something with teal and behind. Um, so here. Yeah, you can like take off the sound as well. But it would be an animated um, text and then you'd have the, the video content behind. And then you can also export that and upload it into Facebook onto your cover. And so then obviously nice. that will, that will draw more people, right? Because yes. it's moving. Yeah. Yes. Anything that moves generates more, more eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's going to bring more people. It's going to have them look at your content longer. So as much as you can integrate movement. Okay. Is better. Yeah. There's also the elements component on this side. So you can choose from a bunch of different pieces. So this is kind of more the, the basics of creating, creating your post, but it's very important when you're thinking about creating your content that you're thinking of your branded content. Uh, for, so for example, for Instagram, if you're doing you know, Tips Tuesday, um, every Tuesday you want to share a tip about your, your service, um, you would create it in here. It would have a similar kind of feel. Um, then you would do your campaign, which is separate, which would be like for your service, product or service. So say if I was trying to sell more cookies, um, I would show maybe a photo of, of the cookies and then do a post about that. But that would be different than my branded content. But it's nice you can kind of create this plan. So I'll show you quickly. Um, I, I haven't used the, the planning as much. Um, just kind of dabbled with it, but there's a content planner on this side. 
where you can actually like click a little plus button and you can create your design inside of here and you can choose which which piece you'd like to use. Oh, that's cool. That yeah, so cool. then that way you can actually start to plan all of your content for the month <laughs> and you can pre pre-design it so you're not like which what piece do I use now? Um, so I'll just create so now it's a social just means Instagram pretty much, just a square. And then yeah, you can do do again. You can you can choose the most recently used. So for us with Zap, we love using these angles and motion. And uh, uh, so this is kind of one of the templates that we use to start as our as our foundation. Um, and then you can schedule as well. You can say schedule to. This is pretty new with, with Canva. You can also schedule to your oh, Facebook wow. page. So this, uh, I think, is a new feature only the last couple Amazing. weeks. Yeah, I haven't seen this. No. Yeah. So it's, uh, it saves a lot of time that way. Um, another thing you can do is when you download it, it has the video um, and it'll, you'll choose. So these ones are still in beta, but I find they work still. But then you just download it, which will take a while. But it'll download, then you can upload it to your Facebook cover. Um, your your story, all different pieces. So then, it, the, when you save it, the movement goes with it. It, it saves yeah. that all part. Of, okay. Yeah, and it's quite small because it's a GIF, a GIF or GIF. Um, but they it does it does all save, and it's uh, it's not too big of an image as well. That's the thing I like about Canva is you can pick the size, and it makes it like if you need a cover, it makes a cover. If you need a yes. event page, it makes an event page. Like that's the part yes. that it takes all that guesswork out of it. Exactly. exactly. Oh, it's so awesome. That's Another thing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, and it's very quick. So the one thing that I find with Canva though, is that people use those predefined templates and I can always point out who's using Canva. I, I you know, mm -hmm. you can point, I'm a designer as well, but I can point out and be like, okay, that's that template. Cause now more, more people are using it. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is creating those like custom flares if you can. So like in that element folder, even if you just create a few unique pieces, like I want to use, a, you know, more lines, um, let's just say. So I'd find something that would create more flare inside of, inside of here. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, you just turned a template into something that is more unique to your brand. So always think about, you know, what does my brand look and feel like? Do I use, what color palettes do I use? And, and, and use those templates as like the framework, but then adjust accordingly. Fonts are also a big one. Um, if your brand is like very clean um, and it's called, it's called a, a sans serif font, which doesn't have the feet on it, <laughs> but then, you know, stay consistent and use that type of font for, for all of your Canva pieces. Um, you can, you can use different fonts for different personalities for the campaigns, but when it's coming from your brand, keep it consistent. Um, I find that's one, one, one big thing that a lot of companies, they don't keep it consistent. It's hard to tell who their, the brand um, identity really is. I noticed at the very beginning on your first page where you were showing us, you had picked, I think it was three or four different font styles that you use all the time. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then I remember, yeah, which ones are the ones I use. Um, I do use some more fun fonts depending on my campaign. So the campaign can, can have uh, more fun and you're, you're targeting audiences. Whereas when you're doing it from your brand, it has to have that brand flavor and that brand feel. So that when people see that post, they know it's coming from you. Okay. Another thing you can get doing to it is creating folders. So how I have, I'm working on putting pieces in my folders, but um, foldering is really organized. So I'm starting to use, I used to use a Hootsuite for, for posting for social. And I'm actually switching that over and using Canva with, with those strong, with those, uh, the scheduling side. So if I can keep it all in one space, the better. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to my main space here. So the power, uh, the power of Canva is, yeah, you can use all of your components. So when you're posting for social, using the different sizes. So for the story, 
um, is also very different than just doing the post. So it's nice when you can use um, animation in your story. Um, have, have any of you done uh, Instagram stories before into Facebook as well? Yeah. So you have? No. Okay. It, no. <laughs> it's very powerful. Oh, it's, oh yeah, there's so many things, right? <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's very powerful and it's easy to create while you're creating everything inside of Canva. Um, so when you create your Instagram, let me just open up the side here. So right here, there's an Instagram story and you can actually share the Instagram story onto Facebook. So then these are, you wanna create mo movement. So normally in Instagram, you would create like your own little gifts and you'd, you'd add them all and you create your own where Canva is so awesome because it comes with it all. So then you, you choose something, but then you, you add, add based on your brand. So it has your own flavor to it. Something is, is kind of nice too. So if I were to take this piece, you can change the color. See here, even changing backgrounds is nice. Just having some textures, but I would even pick your main favorites that relate to your brand and kind of create like a, a toolbox of, of all the pieces that you can use. So it's not uh, trying to come up with a design from scratch. So how I use angled graphics and my color palette, um, even textures, like line textures, things like that. And you can save them into your favorites. And then you can pull those elements out and you know, tweak your layout, but it still looks like it's coming from you. Just gonna open this here. So I do a lot of uh, presentations inside of it and creating these animated elements um, just inside of here are, are awesome. I find I get a lot of people like stopping and looking for like say even sales sheets where you're gonna send a sales sheet, you can send actually like a video file and people can see the animated, the animation as well. Does anyone do uh, presentations for clients or send sales sheets at all? Presentations, yes. Yeah, awesome. And how about you guys? Is there anything else that you guys would like to see in terms of uh, the other layouts for templates? Like design components? Would you like to see more like poster design and um, for print? Yeah, I think something for print would be great. Sounds good. So you can go through, there's, there's a lot of uh, different ways you can do it. Um, okay. Can this program just be run on a Chromebook too, or? Cause it's just web-based, isn't it? There is um, on like on your, on your phone, you can yeah. um, edit as well. Okay. You can do it. Um, the pro I know has a little bit more features inside yeah. of it. Are you running the app? right now as well? Just on my phone, but I was thinking some people just want to use a Chromebook instead of say a laptop with Windows 10 or something. So, and it is all web-based. I'm thinking it will, yeah. but. Yeah, I believe so. I've never used it on one before, but um, I believe so. When you're setting it up for, for print as well, um, you'd like to see, there's like, if you go into rulers and guides and margins, um, as well as show print bleed, this one is very important. So every printer wants to see bleed on your, on your print files. So that just means that it's an extra, um, it's like, oh, does it 1.25 or 0 0.125 inch bleed here? And that's just so that it doesn't trim into your artwork. So when you're designing um, not to put any items that you want caught off um, right where that bleed mark is. 
it's nice. It's so intuitive um, creating, creating pieces. Um, the one thing though is making it your own. So creating, making it unique is very important. That's where you can find these elements. Um, you can also import your own graphics as well. Um, some, I have one thing that we talk about too is you can grab some on Shutterstock. They have like um, iconography on Shutterstock. Uh, have, you, have you heard of Shutterstock before? You can uh, purchase more graphics as well on there that are relating to your brand and then you can upload them as well on, on the poster. But the, the library is very robust. So there's, there's a, lot to, a lot to choose from. Um, kind of because there's also just pictures, right? There's a place where you can go on and just yeah. pull stock pictures. Like I do, I use this Here. lots for us. I'll, yeah. you know, summer vacation and it'll pull up, you know. Yes. And if they're like very good graphic, like very good pictures that you can then use mm. to work with whatever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So right in the photos area, you can search in the bar here and then you have, you can choose from anything that you, that you see. Um, one thing that's, uh, it's, it's tricky when you see, yeah, the similar photos, they're always, they're always getting more photos. So they're uploading and there's new photographers always posting on here as well. So they don't get stale. They, you know, you don't see the same photo everywhere you go. Uh, especially I've noticed if you find a picture you really want to use, all of a sudden it won't be there. Like it, it's there, but it might, they've moved it or they've changed it. Yes, exactly. So when you buy Pro, you don't have to pay for all these different features then. Like I noticed when you highlight some of those pictures, it says mm -hmm. Pro only, yeah. right? So. Yeah. And like I know right now here at Sage Hill, we don't have the Pro version we're going to. So when I go through, there's one, it'll come up and say free. So I mm -hmm. can pick through all the what things that are free. And so there's certain um text you can use there's certain pictures there's certain templates you can use but when you go to the pro then you'll see as you hover over it adds a whole bunch more that you can use so they're like we've been using the free option no problem but we are ready we're using it more and more that we're ready to go to the next step the more you use it makes sense to are you able to change those background colors that we're looking at right now, the yellow, the blue, and the brown, or is that static yes. there? Yes, yeah, so you can click on it. Oh, okay, it is clickable, okay. One second here. Usually it lets me edit. I'm just checking here on this template. Oh, so, okay, so actually this one is, is locked. Um, I haven't seen the locked version yet, so just give me a second here. It's not grouped either, is it? No, no, there's no options up here. Yeah, because usually you click on it and then all the color pal palette mm -hmm. comes up, up at the here. top. Up there, it might be the template. And go back to the template here. There we go. So this one, it just, I think it's just the template. Uh, but this one, yes, I can go in here, I can click on it, and I can change the color. You can also go into these individual elements as well. You can ungroup them, and you okay. can change the color here. Yeah, so then we can choose, yeah, anything. Hmm inside of there, you can choose each element as well. They can be scaled. So you just grab the corner and you pull, and then you can kind of move them all around. Um, so it's showing me up top here is usually the document colors, and then you can add your branded colors in your palette, so it's just easy to grab. And then even text, if you would like to change this text, it's really great working from a framework because then you can really you can have everything kind of in place and you can really go in and change all your fonts so my font that i use for my our brand is uh, gotham so then it would change to gotham things like that um, another thing you can do as well is um, you can highlight inside and then up top here you can create an uppercase so if i wanted to go uppercase instead of just lowercase nice as well 
you can select specific spots. So you just, you can just pull and drag. And then it's nice having like a personality font. If you have your, your um, sans serif font, you can go and you can find something that's a little bit more unique in play. So it depends on your personality of your brand, but it's nice to have, have something that's like got a bit of personality to it. So then when you, when you come here, then you can download. And then that would be downloading it for print once you're ready for that as well. And it's nice too, because if you decided, you know, I want to do a two-sided poster and print them and hand them out, you can add another page here as well. So just a, a new page right here in the corner. And then you can actually, if you wanted to copy and paste it, you could just, you go command C and it copies all these components. And then you click on the page you want to go to and you go command V and it posts and it, it uh, duplicates the content. So you're not working from scratch again. And then you can, you know, take things off. You can adjust it from there. Um, I find that a really good option for even like collaborating with teams. So there's, um, there's actually team spaces. So if any of you are in a team and you're trying to work on a design together, you can actually like do this like team board where you brainstorm together and you can all have different computers and, and do that as well. So if, you know, say if I'm working on a design and I, you know, I don't have the time to finish it for, um, for our own social, then my teammate can actually come up and, and start working on it with, with their um, login and then we can work as a team. On the back, if you were doing a front and a back, could you actually pull another picture from the left-hand side there and fill that empty page? Yes, in here? Yes. Like if you go than... into your photos, like this here? Sure, okay. Yep. Okay. So then you can actually pull in anything you like. So then you just kind of go into your little sandbox over here and um, you just grab all the things that you would like to use. Okay. Let's say if I wanted a bit of texture on the background, you can also do a little bit of transparency. Um, this has become a background piece. When it's a background, it actually takes the place um, of, of it. So I bring it right back to the color I was using. You can also go Command Z and it'll go back. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I go Command, a command Z and it takes, it takes it off. So even for a text, I was gonna show you guys this as well. Um, let's go to find it. So say if I'm in here, there's ways you can add like, you know, drop shadows as well. So if you go into effects, I left you, the peanut butter. you can add a drop shadow um, on your, on your underneath your text as well. And then that's a, it adds a bit of dimension as well. And you can kind of change the direction. You can do a lot of different different things. It's really good for summer for showing that drop shadow. It looks like sun is hitting the text. Another one too is uh, there's a flip side. So you can flip it, the graphic. And flip it upside down, turn it around. So if you wanted this graphic to come in, a, come in the corner, you wanted to turn around, you can use this here. So this is the copy button, but I just like going, just highlighting it all and going Command C. So on that last one, um, I think that's where the, the lock was. So if you lock something, it actually makes it so you can't move it. So a lot of times when you do a design and you're like, I, why is everything moving around on me? You can, you can lock specific items and then you can unlock them. And how did you lock them, Hannah? I, I missed that. Yep. So in the corner, there's like a little lock button here. And you just oh, click yeah. on it oh, okay. and it locks, it locks it in place so that when you're doing a multi-layer um, component, like this little element, 
trying to, you know, do both of these at the same time, mm -hmm. I, I'd be moving things around. And then just yeah, unlock in the corner. Oh, now I see it. Okay. Yeah. You can duplicate items. So you can duplicate that as well quick, quickly that way. Is everything making sense to everybody? Show that duplication again. Sure. So when you click on the item you want to duplicate, then you go into the duplicate corner. Okay. Um, can you see my cursor there? And then you just duplicate. And say if it's duplicating, you can't find where the duplication is, um, you can lock it, and then you can find your piece that you, you didn't need to duplicate. <laughs> or you can still find, so you're not like doing multiple pieces of the same one. I've done that before. So I would say though, when you're organizing um, uh, everything as well, you want to create them in the folders because it'll make your life so much easier when you do. Um, I have them, I have them offsite on my com my computer, but uh, it's very, it's good when you're working in Canva to keep it all clean as much as you can. They have also integrations when you go to the more section. You can see there's different styles you can add. There's charts. This is a good one too when you're wanting to show more for presentations. You can go in, you can choose the charts. Um, so there's more integrations over here. You can enter your QR code, add a QR code to your pieces as well. So say if you want to go to my website and then you generate a code, it creates your QR code. So you can actually like have this on your printed pieces. Oh. And so this is awesome because then people can take a, take a, they put their camera up to it and then they'll take them to the website. So it just helps people go to your website quicker for your product or service, um, adding it to your, to your print pieces. They have so many integrations, I think like weekly, there's something new, uh, which is awesome. It's making all of our lives so much easier, but then it's, it's hard, to, hard to keep up with them all. Um, another one would be the, pix the pixels. This is where you can find more stock imagery if, you, if it's not on, on Canva itself. So you can add, you know, more unique pieces here. So then these are styled as well. So if you want to create a specific feel, like a specific vibe for your, for your brand, you can kind of go through here and you can say, you know, my brand feel is this palette with this font. And it helps you kind of curate the palette. So then it, ch it changes automatically everything to look like this. So if you're like, you know, I kind of want to try it to be a little bit more like edgy, you know, then you can kind of do these quick ones that get you started in the right direction instead of having to go in and try and change each piece of color and things like that. It gives you more ideas to work from. And you can save something, say if you've done something, okay, I better save this now. And you can save it and then you can play with it more. Yes. And you're able to do that too. So. Yes, so that's a good point. Um, when you're saving pieces, it'll, it'll auto save over top of it. Great. So the pink design that I did here, this now is auto saved. Okay. So if I'm like, you know, I wanna keep that previous version, then I go up in here, up in the top, top right, and I'll rechange it to change the name. So okay. grand opening sale and I'll go like dot oh one. Okay. And then that'll that'll save that dot oh one. Um, but then okay, I want to do another one. I go in, I go file, uh, make a copy. Okay. And then it'll create an exact copy of the one I just made. And then I can I can name it uh, the name and then go oh two. And then I can change anything I want and I'll have both versions saved. So if I want to go back to the old version, I can. Right. Okay. I know I save lots of things and uh, then I go back and just redo them and, or change some wording or do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's where that folder will be really handy mm -hmm. is because then you can put, you know, all of the posters you've created and put them all in there. And then that way you can go and see all those iterations and you'll have this bank of, of uh, posters once you get going on it. Hmm. 
So then resize is, is kind of a, a neat option as well. So if you go into resize and you, you love this design, but you want to, I made a copy of it so I didn't lose it, but I want to you know, make it into a Facebook post. And I also want to make it into a Facebook cover. So then I would say copy and resize. Um, it may not be amazing when you first get it in there, but at least it's like, it's the size you're looking for. So you can carry that one design and you can have it go into all of your different um, platforms. So I get pretty messy after a while because I have so many tabs that it opens, especially when I'm resizing everything. But uh, it's good because then you save it into your folders and you have it all in there. You can start to close tabs off. Don't click on the X, right? <laughs> Don't click on the X unless you've saved it. <laughs> exactly. Animated social media. So yeah, then you can switch it to more animations as well. So say you wanted to animate that as like after, it'll take you to the animate section and you can actually animate each, uh, each item inside pretty, of it. That's pretty neat. Yeah, but then you can also change the timing. So. So it's not so, um, so quick. Yeah. You know, you kind of play with that as well. And then you can play it up top on the corner. So you want to see it again, see how fast it is. You're like, wow, that is kind of crazy. You know, I want to, <laughs> I want to fix it. So that way you can kind of see a preview of it mm -hmm. before exporting it and then realizing like, oh my gosh, it's, it's way too fast. So there's, there's many components inside of it. And I would recommend this content planner to plan your social posts inside of here. And it is so new, but it has a lot of capabilities. So if you're, if you're kind of like the last minute poster or like you want to get things going quickly on social, you can quickly like share that and pre pre plan it. Was there I think this is, yeah, I think this is so great because I was just working on a poster and adding a QR code, but I had created a QR code somewhere else, dragged it in, um, and then I didn't, didn't do the bleed thing. And now I'm like, I better redo this poster, you know? So just yeah. these little bits, I'm like, oh, I, I need to redo this. But not only that, I used to use Hootsuite as well. Um, and I really like that you can go in and create everything in this schedule it yeah. everything can have the same look and feel yeah. everything you know it's quite automated and that's really handy it's so easy and it's getting um if you get the emails as well so if you're on their email marketing once you purchase or once you've signed up then you actually get all these tips that come through and mm -hmm. i thought it was phenomenal um there's one section inside of it that has like a design section i just have to find it here I thought I was an avid user of Canva, but I see I'm using like, like 0.5 of it. <laughs> oh, it's so much. 0.05 of it. There's so it's much so, more I could do. One thing inside of it is really great is uh, design school in Canva. Oh. So everybody is using Canva. Um, so many people, so many businesses, but how are you different and how does your brand um, look and feel like you? And that's where I found in this live classroom you're able to um, learn all these components that'll help you with your design eye because it's developing an eye. It's learning, you know, combinations of color and um, balancing of elements. So when you balance your design um, where, you know, is it top heavy with photography and then the bottom, the text is, you know, too small or so there's a lot about um, design eye and balance. And I find that this is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, this one, we talk about branding in our agency and branding is so important and branding your business and making the look and feel consistent is huge. Um, especially when you have this playground of Canva, you can literally do anything. You want to use all the really great things. You're like, I want to use this like brush tool and then I want to use this arrow, but then you find that it's not consistent. And so you really want to create this, like this consistency that, that shows who your brand really is. Is this uh is this also available in the free version? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, in my pro, I get it. 
I would just, I would check. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't know the yeah. answer to that either. I know in the free version, most of the stuff is there. I don't know about this. Like um, some of these, some of these features too are new that I've, that have only come in in the last month. Some of the, like I hadn't been using it a whole bunch and now I've been back on and man, it's changed in the last little while too. So much. So we, we've been creating, like there's a graph maker as well in here. It's in the features. So they add new features inside of here all the time. And it's hard to keep up, even for me. Um, I keep up as much as I can, but then I get into a rut of the things I always use. But the, uh, the graph maker has been awesome. So I've gone in here, we've created like marketing strategy plans that are more visual inside of here. Uh, it's not just text. Um, so it's, it's great to use it that way. Um, they have the photo editing sides. You can talk about like applying textures to your, to your images. So they're not just plain images. You can add a bit of a grain texture to make it feel more um, reminiscent of old school uh, photography. Could you show us an image and just manipulate it and just- Sure. Just gonna grab an image on here. Okay, so then you have up top here, you have your effects and you have your filters. So you can add your, your effect, which is, um, let's see, would be a good one here. They call it bad TV. This one's a set one. But yeah, then you get to choose, you know, which kind of reminiscent of old VHS tapes or <laughs> And you can actually like change your distortion. So if you want to have it, you know, kind of that glitchy look, you can, you can kind of play with how much you want it. Um, there's lots of, there's so many ways that you can kind of like, wow, this looks like the world's ending, but um, <laughs> uh, there's so many, so many things. And if you, if you don't like this one, let's see here, I go command Z. And I'm like, wow, I didn't like that. <laughs> so I just command Z and now it's back to the way it was. You can add just simple uh, filters as well. So you can change, you know, a bit of, I don't like to do too much intensity. Um, so then you can kind of add a little bit if you'd like, just slight bits, doesn't change it so much like the Instagram filters, but then you have a bit more of a, a vintage feel if you kind of lighten it up a little bit. And so you can kind of play with, these components, but I would keep in mind, unless you're going for the really dramatic um, kind of look, you want to keep it subtle. So if you can keep it subtle, subtle is usually best. And then yes, you can, you can flip it again as well. So if you liked it the other way. So then there's, there's so many, there's so many options. Sometimes it feels like there's too many, but you kind of create your overall look and feel for your brand. So yeah, you can just really go through and, and just play around with these, these pieces. It's a lot of fun playing around. <laughs> Is there any more questions for me with um, photos or, or anything as I've been going through? Is there anything someone would like to see for their own? Um, Good question then. Yeah. Do yeah. we have different frames for the photos? Like, I'm, I'm not sure if I missed something like, um, you know, shapes and things like that. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So they've, there's so many um, inside of here. Uh -huh. There's so many, I'm just thinking here. 
So inside of here, there's shapes. So you can add a shape. You can kind of create everything you want from scratch. And you, you can, can also... put the logo inside that shape? Yes. Okay. Yep, so then I go to my uploads and say, let's so. I think I had my logo in here easily. But it, uh, you, it's in my uploads uh, normally. So you'd have it in your uploads and then you can click on it and you can add your own. So say if I'm Under Armour, <laughs> I, can add, I can add my logo in here. Um, you can also create like a, uh, a transparency on it. So if you're like, I want to watermark it, you know, it's just there. You can add just a watermark over top. Um, you can... You can actually take the, some of those frame ones and it will actually put the picture right in, right, Hannah? Yes, that's right, yep. Yeah. Uh, this one. Let's see here. So the frame ones that she was speaking about, is that where the picture kind of takes on the shape that you select? Yes. Um, that is an element. Try to think offhand for that one. I think it's if this you, one. Yeah, I think it's that one. Now if you put a picture in there. If you put your, if you took your picture, yeah. Once again, then you slide it inside. Yeah, it'll slide right inside. Creates. And then you can double click on it and you can scale it. So say if I only wanted this much of it, then you can click off. <coughs> so that's inside of here. It's everything is that drag and drop. It's nice. <laughs> um, and then you can also do opacities as well. One thing that's important is to have your logo in, in your social if you can. So even like a watermark version, you can also create like a, like a bottom Got a little branding bar as well. You can put your logo on the corner. So you can create your own little branding bar on the bottom. And kind of like manipulate the boxes as well. So if you had, you know, your image and then you put your logo on the side or you put your website on the bottom as well. And the way you would make it like a watermark would be in the transparency. That's right. Yep. You got it. Oh, one more thing too, I was going to mention, you can also do, uh, we do email marketing and you can also create your Canva design and then in, in, embed it into your email marketing. So you can actually put that design so it's consistent also in your emails. So it's not just um, plain text. We use HubSpot. And so this is what this HubSpot um, connection is for as well. If you use um, HubSpot or I'm not sure if they have it for a MailChimp or other ones. Is there anything else you'd like me to? show you while I'm in here. Anybody have any other questions? Not myself, no. Okay. It's one that you need to get in and play on, really. Right, Hannah? Yeah, yeah it's something that you, you want to build that design and it's using your colors, things like that. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to look at designs that you guys create, even just like your if you showed me your logo and your overall look, and then you've built some designs, I'd be happy to look at it and, and let you know if it's on brand or um, if you have tips. I have tips for design as well. And do you know, are you able to create like custom colors or is it the palettes that they have? You can actually bring in your own um, hex uh, code. So you can actually bring in, so say, 
I say new color. And you can actually put in your own brand color in here as well. Okay. Yeah. So that's all in new color at the top. You can also do a color picker also. And then it adds it to the document colors. So then you can click that color again. Can you save those hex codes in that system? In your brand colors, you can. But um, I'm not sure if you can just save these only in your document. So when you get out of this document and you go into a new one, um, only your brand colors would be saved and the default colors, as far as I know. Give us some examples of how you use this, uh, even in your own business, Hannah. Sure. Okay, so if I go to all mine. Just a second. I have to leave. I've got customers in meetings. So sure. Thanks very <laughs> it was nice much. to meet you. Thanks, yes, Kevin. Nice to meet you all. Thanks okay. for coming. Thanks, Kevin. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. So I create a lot of um, more like presentations and strategies as well. So more so, um, I use it for social, but more so I use it for for presentations. So I, I create all of these um, like competitive analysis and so this is for me, this is what I create inside of Canva. So um, I create audience personas and um, I create these sliders, um, things like that inside of here. So it's not as exciting <laughs> as um, the social, but, but it's uh, amazing for creating presentations. It's very quick. And then you can also, if you're doing a proposal for a client, for us, even sales sheets, if you're a real estate agent or, or someone that uses a lot of sales sheets, it, uh, it adds a bit of excitement as well. Um, and it's good for finding photography, things like that. But for me, I think I've got about 100 um, <laughs> strategies and proposals and marketing plans all inside of Canva. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've got lots. <laughs> Um, usually I've been using for social until I saw that calendar. I use Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign um, for mine, but I'm switching everything to Canva just because it's so easy and simple to grab and I can upload all my photos. I know that's what we use for Sage Hill. I'm just getting on to using it for all our social media posts. I create them in there. I can go back in and reuse, change the wording, but my colors are all there. My graphics, my logo is uploaded, all that stuff. Yes, exactly. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah, it's, it's really um, good. I'm really excited about this content planner, though. I am, too. I'm, I'm going to check that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. So, yeah, I just found that. So it's nice when you've created your designs as well. You can post it so we can, you can create it later and then reschedule it. But, yeah, it's great. It's great that way. Have you been using like Pinterest to post as well? More so for products and services, you can post to Pinterest. So instead of creating so much content and post now, you can post to Pinterest, which is a really exciting feature. A lot of people are adding Pinterest as one of the other, another element and building their page on, on Pinterest. So it's, it's great to have all these other components that, that it links to. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Thank you, Hannah. My pleasure. That was great. Does, if no one has any other questions, um, that has been our hour in a blink. We are gone. <laughs> so fast. And Ryan did answer. He is with uh, Baker Tilly Sask, a uh, accounting firm from Yorkton and Saskatoon. So that kind of gives a background of everybody that was on. Awesome. Nana Barnes. Oh, yeah. I, Nana and came, Simone. And Simone Dixon Again, joined us later. Do you, either of you want to tell us about your businesses? Oh my God, okay. Yeah, I know.